In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, this is Natalie Blackham and it's a pleasure to be with you today. This is In the Last Days TV program. And today we have a treat for you. We have Eliezer Ben Yehuda. Eliezer, thank you for coming today my pleasure. to be you know, with I us. I always like to come here when I'm I in my hometown of Jerusalem and speak to you and speak to your uh, listeners all over the world mm -hmm. and uh, elucidate a little bit about our book of books and also talk about the land and talk about the city and talk about our history, etc., etc. <laughs> so this is wonderful. Eliezer Ben Yehuda is the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda who uh, revived the Hebrew language. Eliezer wrote a book which is called The, Fulfill the Fulfillment of Prophecy. And Eliezer Ben Yehuda, your grandson, your, sorry, your grandfather was a prophet. He was an amazing man. He's my hero, one of my hero. Uh, he was like almost a biblical prophet. He was the one who revived. He had a vision in his, in his heart, and he carried it all through his life. And people are speaking on the street of Jerusalem and in the street of Israel now because of the mighty work that he's done from one man. For me, this is like yes. fantastic. It's a miracle. And it is an act of God, you know, yes. because no man can rise to do something like that yes. Yes. if it was not the will of God. Very you know? true. Very yeah. true. So today we want to delight in the Torah. Torah means the teaching of the word and like we love to be in it. So we were speaking about Genesis a bit. Do you want? Yes. So we're talking, we were talking before the program started, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as we always do, because we enjoy it. You know, we're not doing it for money. We're doing no. it for the pleasure of it and for the things that we, <coughs> we ourselves can learn from it. And I mentioned to you that the Jewish people originally did not have chapter and verse. Mm -hmm. You know, people always like to say to me, do you know Jeremiah 13, 14? You know, you know I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I know the whole of Jeremiah. And if you will let me look, you know, I can quote it for you, to you by heart mm -hmm. in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And I can do simultaneous translation to a number of languages, more than one. But we don't have chapter and verse. Mm -hmm. We have sections. And every week in the five books of Moses, we read a section. So it's very interesting. For example, the first part of the uh, book is the book of creation. Bereshit. And so we call it Bereshit in the beginning. And I think one time we did a program in which I mm -hmm. told you that the word Bereshit is so loaded, just that one word that you can spend a total of 10 hours mm -hmm. discussing the word Bereshit. And here we go on. We don't just do the first word, and we don't just do the first chapter about the six days of creation, mm -hmm. even with the seventh day, which is already chapter two. By the way, for the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, mm -hmm. originally when we started having chapters, we read the first three verses of chapter two as the last three of chapter one. We called it the first chapter, mm -hmm. you see. And then chapter three or rather verse 3, 4 in chapter 2 became the first verse mm. of, the ch of chapter 2 which for makes, the Hebrew people. Which makes makes a lot of more sense, sense you know, because oh, okay. why did God take six days to create the world? Mm -hmm. So he can arrive at, and the heaven and the earth were finished and all their hosts, and the Lord finished on his seventh day, you know, and all of that thing. And why is it done? Why did he do it like that? So that man will be given this, gift that is far above rubies, mm -hmm. and the gift is Shabbat. Mm -hmm. It's the Sabbath day, which of all the holidays is truly the most important holiday, even though it happens every week. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it is the day that the Lord hallowed. Amen. 
and he wanted us to have it every seventh day. It's not a precious stone, a diamond. No, it's a pebble. Mm -hmm. But you can't get around without having pebbles to show you the path, mm -hmm. you see. And that's the story. So from a Hebrew perspective, we read segments, mm -hmm. and the first segment is called Bereshit. It's the segment of the beginning. It's so not just it. six days. It's not just the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. It's also about Adam, and it's about Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Adam is in the first chapter, you see? Mm -hmm. But then later on, we have a different story. Mm -hmm. And it says that Adam was alone. Even though God created male and female, the female was a... Mm -hmm. No, no, she was an independent agent. Everybody has a right, and her right was not to be a wife to Adam. She didn't want him. So she went her way, and the man didn't have a woman. He didn't have somebody who is going to be bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You see? And then God looked around and said, it's not good that he's alone. I will make him somebody who will be his helper. Mm -hmm. You see? Ez Ezer, Ezer Kenegdo, which is strange to, to say it like that in Hebrew because it means a helper against him. Mm -hmm. Kind of a little bit, you know, you say, oh, so now we understand the relationship between man and a woman, <laughs> you know. The man is there to be creative or to be you know, kind of an assistant to God, and the woman is there to tell him how small he really is, you see, and how insignificant he really is. Kenegdo, you know, like against him. But actually what it means is that when he starts falling, she goes like that, and she stops him from falling. So she helps him. So Ezra Kenegdo is not quite as bad as some people try to tell you what their wife is. <laughs> You know, the, the famous, very good, very there's good. a comedian who says, take my wife, for example. And then he says, yeah, please, take her, take her. You see, like, you know, I'm not giving you an example. I just want to get rid of her. No, not quite like that, you see. And if you have the right kind of wife, you never want to give her up. Anyhow, that's part of the same story of creation, you see, the union of a man and a woman. Therefore shall a man leave his mother and his father and cling unto his wife, and they shall be as one. Mm -hmm. You see? And that is an important lesson. It's part of creation. It's part of that formative stage mm -hmm. of this world that we have. Mm -hmm. You see? And then the whole idea of the garden, mm -hmm. you see, which is really the story of the creation of language. It's not even the story of gardening. Mm -hmm. It's not the Bible of gardening, you know, what, what to garden and when to plant uh, cabbages and when to plant wheat, you know. That's not the kind of Bible that we have here. We talk about something related to man, the beginning of language. He called everything by name. Mm -hmm. And whatever he called, so it became. So it's explain a bit about that, because it's true. It's like God was giving a responsibility to Man. Adam to be creative. Yes, to be creative and also to recognize mm -hmm. the, the gifts that God placed upon this earth. Mm -hmm. It said that he created the garden for the man to be placed in it. Mm -hmm. You see? Imagine what a shock it would have been if man came into this world and it was absolutely Chaos. bare. Sure, but again, we can see even by that how God is good and He prepared everything absolutely, for, absolutely. for man. But anyhow, so we have in Judaism this whole business of creation. And then even we continue with the business of generations, the beginning of mankind. And the beginning of mankind is chaos. Mm -hmm. You see, there are, there are some people who are more precious, and they're called B'nai Elohim, mm -hmm. the sons of God. We're all sons of God in a way, you see, but some of us are more and some of us are less, unfortunately, because it's in the eyes of men, not in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of God, there's only one humanity. We're all B'nai Adam, mm -hmm. you see. Humanity is called the sons of Adam, mm -hmm. 
You see, so, but for people, you know, some of them, they say, Bnei Elohim, and they are uh, giants, you know, they were not 15 feet tall, and they were certainly not uh, supermen, and they couldn't leap over a mountain in one uh, jump, you know? No, that did not happen. But they were somehow more developed, more powerful, more cunning, mm -hmm. you see? And so what did they do? They grabbed the young girls of the simple human beings, they didn't marry, they just grabbed them and they gratified their needs on them, which we know what that means. Mm -hmm. And then they left them alone because they were pregnant. All of a sudden they were fat like this, you know, and then they had another human being all of a sudden in their, in their hands, you know, that was shouting all the time, hungry and every whatever have you, you know, and they said, ah, oh, forget it, this is not the fun person anymore. And they went looking for another one. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the land was filled with Violence. violence. You see, even what was, ha what was happening to these girls, that they were used, abused, and dismissed, was a form of violence. Sure. You see? Mm -hmm. So God says, now, this is not good. This is not good. You see? But he, before he gets to that point, that's the end of the portion. But in the beginning of the portion, there's just the man and not the woman he created, male and female, but the second woman, which he built, the, 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 the use, yeah. you know, the, the, the Hebrew story says he actually built her, he manufactured her. Vayitzer, et ha'isha is the word. Yitzer is product. Mm -hmm. He produced her, mm -hmm. you see. He took a little bit from here and a little bit from there, not like the man which he created out of the dust of the earth. You see, and then the man said, okay, now this, you see, it was built of spare parts from me. It is mine. It's me. No, it's not, it's more than mine. Okay. It's, oh, it's, it's part of veritably me. Veritably me, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. It's flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Mm -hmm. You see, and so he said, and this shall be called Chava, for example, Eve. You see, now what is this Eve? In Hebrew, it says, because she was taken out of the male, but Chava doesn't, there's no way to connect the two. Mm -hmm. Strangely enough, I have a commentary on it that says Chava actually is the Hebrew word for a ranch, okay. you know, or, or a place that you're going to work in, a kind of like a, a personal little village. Mm -hmm. And he says, she is my village, mm -hmm. you see? And if I'm gonna work on her, she will give me children, you see? And then it says the difference between the sons of God mm -hmm. and the son and, and Adam is that they just used, abused, and threw out. And he hallowed, he, he cherished, he stayed with her, and he said, I'm going to work with her, and I got, I'm going to work on her, you see? And so she bore a child, mm -hmm. you see? And she gave it the name. So there is already, you know, it's not a patriarchy necessarily. Mm -hmm. And then she had a second son, Hevel, and then, excuse me, then she had a third son. So I wanted to say the name Chava yes. in Hebrew is the is, name is, Eve is in, in English. In English I want to make but sure in for Hebrew, the people. I connected with ranch. Mm -hmm. She became his ranch. Mm -hmm. You see? She became the place where his seed could become humanity. Mm -hmm. You see? And then, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the struggle between the farm-grown children mm -hmm. from families and between the uh, Bnei Elohim, mm -hmm. who are evil right even before it all starts, then the land is full of evil, Hamas, mm -hmm. which is not just evil, but it's also violence, violence. Yeah. you see? Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say the last words are, 
and they, and Noah mm -hmm. pleased the Lord because Noah in the second part, which we begin in the next verse, mm -hmm. and it says, Noah was a simple man, ish tamim, you see? And no, it says ish tzaddik, it says he was a righteous oh, man, tzaddik. but he was righteous in his generation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in the Hebrew scriptures, uh, the names are very important because the name is made to fit the person. Mm -hmm. And Noah means comfortable. Tranquil tranquility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, no, it's, it's convenience. Okay. You know, convenience. Mm -hmm. For example, a lounge chair mm -hmm. in Hebrew is called Kisei Noach. Okay. You see, it's a comfortable chair. Mm -hmm. You see, and Noah was a comfortable man. Very interestingly, the word Noah, you know, is nun and chet. Mm -hmm. And the verse that is given at the end of the uh, first section, it says, V'noach matza chen be'enei Adonai, which means Noah was graceful was found to be graceful in the eyes of God. The interesting thing is that Noah mm -hmm. and Chen is a same word, but in the other direction, mm -hmm. you know? Palindrome, they call it, I Something think. Something like that? Yes, <laughs> you know, uh, like, you know, anyhow. Like uh, a mirror. Like yes. You have put a mm -hmm. mirror. Yeah, but anyhow, so, you know, what's, what's the idea here? That chen, Noach is a chen person. Mm -hmm. He's a, a, a man of comfort and convenience, and therefore, he's pleasant. Mm -hmm. You see, the word chen is pleasant, you see? And we say, when we look for a, a wife, when a man looks for a wife, he looks for a woman who is not only yafa, mm -hmm. which means pretty, mm -hmm. but ba'alat chen, that she has, she's graceful. Mm -hmm. You see, she's pleasant to be with, and all that. That's very important. Mm -hmm. So God loved Noah, so that he will be with chen, and so in the portion of Noah we read all about the flood. Mm -hmm. You see, which was, which is uncomfortable. And then we go on and we read about the three sons and that business that happened, which we don't really know and understand. What was it that happened with, with the, uh, you know, seeing the nakedness of Noah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there is a, a uh, explanation to that too. I just don't want to get into it because we are trying to take the long, large picture, you know, and so, uh, you know, but it all goes on, you know, with the generations, you know, what happened after Noah. Mm -hmm. And after Noah, there are 10 generations, and then we come to Abraham. Now, there were 10 generations from the beginning, from Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam was not a question of whether or not he pleased God. He was the first human being. He was kind of like uh, the beta version of humanity, you know? And finally, he comes up, got the, the generations come up to the Noah person, mm -hmm. the person who's convenient, you know, like he, he fills his shoes okay, he knows what he's doing, he even is pleasant to God, if God finds him to be pleasant. But now we have 10 generations, and the 10 generations are really not much better than the 10 generations Before. between Adam to Noah. But this time, God decided he's not going to do a flood again. Mm -hmm. He's not going to start all over. But what he's going to do is he's going to look for a righteous man. He's going to look for a man that he can relate to so that he can teach him mm -hmm. how to teach humanity. He comes to the conclusion, which we read about in the story of Noah, and God saw that the nature of man is bad from the beginning. Left to his own devices is going to be bad. 
It's not our nature to be good. It's not our nature to be righteous. It's not our nature to be uh, open and willing to share and all of that. No, we want to have mine, 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 everything to myself and forget about the rest of humanity, about the rest of humanity. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, the story of Cain and, Cain and Abel is a story about how one half of humanity can kill and destroy the other half of humanity. Mm -hmm. You see, it's not only Abel that dies, but all the generations that will come after him. You see, and when Cain is left alone, we don't even hear really very much about his children because he did marry and he did have children, but they're not really part of what we call humanity. Mm -hmm. They're the wild people, you see. And then you get Noah and you get the sons of Noah and there's three of them. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a three-part division of humanity. Mm -hmm. And some people say, yeah, you know, on one side you have the Semites. On the other side you have the, uh, the non-Jewish Semitic people. And on the third side you have the people who were the rest of the world, but particularly the European people, the northern people. You see, So maybe that is the division. Maybe it's not. The, this is, the Bible tells us, speaks in parable, just like you believe in Jesus, who also taught in parables, mm -hmm. you see. So it teaches in parables, and it says there were three of them, you see. But one of those three was the father of Canaan, mm -hmm. and we have that one strange line where it says, and Noah knew what Canaan did to him. Mm -hmm. You see, it doesn't say that he knew what Shem did to him. No, or Ham, no, or Yafet, no, Canaan. And he says, he said, damned be Canaan, and he shall be servant of his brothers. Mm -hmm. You see, so what is that all about? That's for another program. <laughs> we go on with the story, and we come 10 generations up mm -hmm. to Abraham. Abraham. And Abraham, there is no... Uh, story that is the same, you know, like Noah and Chen, but there is a communication between God and between Abraham. And the, the communication between God and Abraham begins with the words Lech Lecha, which means go thee, you see. Now, actually, it's not go thee. Actually, the word Lecha mm -hmm. means to you. So, and you know, le is two, or it also four. Mm -hmm. You see? For the sake of, you know, we say leman. Mm -hmm. You see? So. For yourself. Lech, lecha, go for yourself. Mm -hmm. You see? And again, we have that thing. And with lech and lecha, we even have a hint of the numerical value. In Hebrew, the letters all have a number. This is amazing. For you to understand, it's like the Hebrew language is without vowels. And, and when you read it, and you read it again, and you chew it, suddenly you can see it in one way, but you can look in an other way, which means that no way, there is not just one way to look at the world. It's That's like correct. so full of wisdom and, but every letter is so important, isn't Absolutely. it? So it's like, Absolutely. It's, it's and a there is richness. also this science, mm -hmm. in quotes, mm -hmm. of the mathematics, the numerical value of Lamed Chaf. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, Lamed is 30, mm -hmm. Chaf is 20. Mm -hmm. Put them together and what have you had? 50. 50. So what is Lech Lecha? 50-50. He says to him, I want you to go, but it's a 50-50 deal. I'm putting in my 50, you have to put in your 50. You see? You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for Lecha. You have to do it for yourself. This is very good. Don't blame me and don't depend on it, you know. Well, God is with me, you know, so I can go and, and, and insult you. And if you try to do something to me, watch out because I have that God, you know. He's going to strike you dead or whatever have you. No. Mm -hmm. 
It's not going to happen. It's for you. You want to have respect by other men, you be respectful to them, mm -hmm. etc. And that way, we come to this portion and we begin to see our father Abraham, mm -hmm. the progenitor of the Jewish people, you see, and we see him as a person who discovers God, mm -hmm. God reveals himself to him partially because Abraham already knows. It's called Abram at first, mm -hmm. you see, and Abram already knows that there is such a God, and he already realizes that you don't put your trust in man and that you don't serve some superman. We're all the same. We're all God's creation. We're all God's children. And the right man, the proper man, so we call him righteous, mm -hmm. you see, is the person who recognizes the man. And if you look in the New Testament, you know, where we hear, render unto uh, um, God what is God and render unto man, which is Rome, mm -hmm. what is to Rome, you see? I was and thinking about when you say that, it's like when they speak about Jesus, his parents were Tzedek and the family was Tzedek and there is right. people on the Temple Mount. And it's like see, all righteous it's people. It's all like that, yes. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that he also recognized and knew mm -hmm. that your first allegiance mm -hmm. is to God. And if you don't think that, then go back to your doing. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm, I'm about the business of God. I oh, know. And I'm here now. Go after me. Yeah. So, you see, we have to go after God and he's showing us we do our part and he does our part. And thank you, Eliezer, again to come today. Next week, we will carry on because you can see the Torah is so beautiful that there is so much to learn. And it, give, it make us to have a strong faith and to see that God is a good God. I think this is very important now from Eliezer and from me. Bye from now. And we send you greetings and shalom from, from Israel. Jerusalem. Amen. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In the Last Days.